Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we're dealing with the 1986 Ford F-150 XLT Lariat. So this now has 1042 horsepower, 890 pounds-feet of torque from a 6.2 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine. The car itself now weighs 3,304 pounds, still has its all-wheel drive system but it's now got even better off-road suspension and off-road tyres and it can now do not 16 3.713 seconds and not to 106.167 seconds while going on to a top speed of 175 miles an hour. So yeah, this has pretty good stats in most regards. The off-road capability, launch, acceleration and speed are all really rather good. Braking is decent for a car of this age and especially in terms of its now weight as it is obviously lighter than what it could do originally but the handling is easily the weak point on this. It wasn't particularly great in its stock form but obviously we only had 185 horsepower in its stock form and not much more in the way of torque so yeah the handling really wasn't challenged with that original amount of power so yeah but clearly it will be now with all of this extra power as uh, yeah got about we've got nearly 800 horsepower more than we had originally which is a hell of a lot and um, we've got 620 pounds feet of torque extra as well so we're asking a lot from this car but hopefully the off-road capability and the general acceleration will um, overcome any of its handling flaws hope this does do well though because I really rather like this truck and I'm really glad that it's in the game I need to buy the festival playlist for only 20 points so get out there and you can get it if you haven't already yeah let's see what it can do it's able to get up to a good rate of speed at least. If this can beat any of the more modern F 150s that we've taken out on this series, then uh, I'll be pleased with that. Bit of understeer there. Yeah, the handling does feel kind of vague in places. The brakes are uh, decent. And at least it's not having to deal with the addition of all wheel drive, it's something it already had. That's the only real benefit with this. Bouncing up there as expected given it's a uh, pickup truck and pickup trucks obviously have a limited amount of weight at the rear compared to the front and therefore any bouncing around is to be expected. There's no weight keeping that rear end down. It's struggling for agility front end definitely feels a little bit vague and um, slow to react, which is a bit of a shame because it's stopping us from being quicker. But once we do get a uh, decent um, size room to uh, floor it, we uh, are able to gain a reasonable amount of speed. interesting to see what this does in comparison to the F-250 from the Bertie because that was a heavily modified car and even more modified once I had my hands on it so yeah see what it can do in comparison to that which was heavier and a much larger vehicle but it was more modern so therefore it had more modern suspension, tyres, brakes already on it and then obviously my upgrades made it even more modern so yeah this isn't anywhere near as sophisticated as that car. Oh dear, yeah. Lack of braking there really screwed us over. We came over that bump and we just didn't have the uh, traction to slow down. So let's do that this time. We've used up, I think that was two of our rewinds. We have one left, but luckily we don't have much left at this course, so we shouldn't need it. corner. Come on, pick up the pace. Yeah, 
We're going to be slower than the F-250 from the previous, uh, well, not previous episode, I think it wasn't. Um, but yeah, the Doberti F-250 was slightly quicker, but we are pretty decent at 3 minutes 30.878. Um, yeah, the Doberti was in the previous episode, so um, yeah, we are slightly slower than that, but given the age difference and the fact that this is dealing with way more power than it had originally, that is not a half bad time. And uh, yeah, it's only just over, no, actually just under a second slower than that Doberti vehicle, so that is pretty decent. And uh, yeah, we're only just over, no, just under 0.2 of a second slower than a Land Cruiser from 2016. But we are quicker than a Sierra Cars RX-3, a Toyota Tundra TRD Pro, Porsche Macan LPR Rally Raid and the Doberti F-150 Pre-Runner. So we're quicker than another F-150. Uh, we're also quicker than the F-450, the DW, DRW Platinum, which was not particularly quick. Um, but yeah, they're the only two uh, F-Series vehicles that we are quicker than, unfortunately, with the likes of the SVT Lightning from 2003 being quicker than this by more than two seconds. The Lightning Platinum, the electric version of the F-150, also being quicker than this. And yeah, we've taken a lot of F-Series vehicles out on this series. But yeah, I think they're the only ones that are quicker than us outside of that Doberti. So uh, yeah, not the slowest F-Series car that we've had on this series, but neither is it the fastest. And uh, yeah, that's purely just because the handling was just not good enough really for the amount of power and extra acceleration and speed that it has now going on so uh, yeah a little bit of a disappointment in some regards but I guess at the end of the day for a near 40 year old car what could you really expect nonetheless so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye